I don't like Telltale games. Okay, hold up, put the pitchforks away and stop writing that angry comment. Actually, keep the comment, it's good for the algorithm. But at least hear me out. I believe that Telltale fills a niche in the gaming industry that honestly, we need more of. I actually like their production quality and the writers are talented. I really do appreciate what they try to do, I just don't like how they go about it. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a massive story nerd. I'm the kind of guy who pays attention to the story and lore of a game. I love that shit. I also love reading visual novels. A lot. And those are pretty much all story. Now here's the thing. Telltale games are basically the cleanest fusion of gaming and visual novels out there. So really, I should love Telltale, right? Well, yeah, I should. And I really fucking want to. But they frustrate me to no end. Allow me to explain a bit about visual novels since they're a pretty niche medium here in the West. There are two main types of story structures that visual novels can follow, kinetic and dynamic. A kinetic visual novel just tells a straight story from beginning to end with little to no input from the reader except to move the story forward. The story is effectively a straight line, structurally speaking. Dynamic visual novels function more like a choose-your-own-adventure book with multiple branching storylines, largely determined by the choices the reader makes throughout the experience. Structurally, these types of visual novels resemble more of a tree with different endpoints. Now, there is another type of visual novel structure that technically falls under dynamic, but I think is worthy of note. This one also has branching story paths, but is notable because it has what's known as a true route, where one particular storyline is what's considered canon. Anytime the reader breaks away from that, they're experiencing a story that, according to the writers, didn't happen. Sometimes these alternate story paths are really short and just amount to, you die because you made the wrong choice, or some other bad ending that just tells you that you fucked up somewhere. Sometimes they're a bit more involved than that, but there's still only one story path that is the correct path, and the visual representation of that is just a straight line like kinetic visual novels, but with a few dead ends branching off. So now that brings us to Telltale. I haven't played every single Telltale game, but from what I have played, the story structure kind of looks like this. Kind of weird, right? Almost like a blend of all the other structures. Well, that's because Telltale is known for giving players tough decisions that feel extremely impactful in the moment. I mean, this person will remember that, is basically a meme because of how often it's told to you throughout a Telltale game. But here's the thing, the choices don't fucking matter. Ultimately, the same shit will happen no matter what you do. What actually changes based on player choice is just minor details. But here's the thing, I don't actually care that the player doesn't have a real impact on the story except to move it forward. Some of my favorite visual novels are kinetic. I don't always need to influence the story. What pisses me off about Telltale is that they strongly imply that your choices actually do matter. They basically bait you into an emotional investment in your decisions only for you to find out later that none of it actually mattered in the end. And that would be fine if they did it once. I can actually see that being a pretty neat tactic to reinforce themes of inevitability if done deliberately. But it wasn't a one-off. That's just Telltale's M.O. And for me, it ruins a story that's otherwise really good. As much as the characters and plot are legitimately compelling and well executed, once I learned that Telltale doesn't actually give you a real choice, every instance of the game baiting me with meaning left a sour taste in my mouth. It's like when somebody's lying to your face and you know it, but they don't know that you know it. It's frustrating. Okay, so I'm gonna spoil Season 1 of Telltale's The Walking Dead. I'll have some sort of warning icon on the screen for the duration, so if you don't want to have it spoiled, just skip ahead until you don't see the icon anymore. So in The Walking Dead, there are a few choices that seem like they'd really, really fucking matter. Most notably, a few where you have to choose between two people to save because Telltale's universes have a perfect sense of dramatic timing. In one instance, you choose between saving the characters Duck and Sean. No matter who you choose, Sean dies and Duck lives. All that changes is how nice Duck's father is to you. Later, you'll choose between two companions, Doug and Carly. This time you do actually influence who lives and who dies, and the story does actually change up a bit, though only a bit. But towards the end of Chapter 3, whoever you saved dies anyway, and you're right back on the linear path. You get choices left and right, but no matter what happens, no matter what you decide, Lee always goes from a ride in a police car at the beginning to dying in a building surrounded by zombies at the end. Yeah, you can choose between leaving him to die of a zombie bite or having Clem shoot him, but he's still fucking dead, and the events leading up to it do not change. I would much rather have no choice than the illusion of choice. I thoroughly enjoy plenty of kinetic visual novels, and I don't fault Telltale for not wanting to make games with wildly branching storylines. After all, having multiple storylines literally multiplies the effective length of the final product, and time is money. 
What angers me is that Telltale games are marketed as games with meaningful, impactful decisions. Every element of the choices from the occasional timed choice, to the little reminders that Kenny will remember that, to the clearly diametric decisions that you have to make, like deciding who lives and who dies, tries its very best to convince you, the player, that your choices are important when in the long run they're not. I don't mind not having impactful choices, but I hate that Telltale feels like they have to lie to me in order to get me emotionally invested instead of just trusting in the writers. Telltale are very good at character dynamics. They're able to maintain a solid balance of character-driven and plot-driven storytelling. The conflicts and external pressures surrounding their protagonists are legitimately compelling and well-crafted. And it takes me away from all of that whenever I see them try to add in cheap suspense with a decision that's ultimately meaningless. As I've said before, Telltale games are a seamless transition between video games and visual novels. And visual novels are a very niche medium here in the West. I think there's a lot of potential for Western gamers to actually enjoy visual novels as much as I do. Hell, there are already visual novels slash video game hybrids that have a sizable fan base here in the West, like Ace Attorney and Danganronpa. Yeah, bet you didn't know that those are part visual novel, did you? Telltale-style games could help bridge that gap. Honestly, as much as they do piss me off, Telltale has admittedly been an influential figure in showing that audiences can be receptive to a narrative focus. But fuck, they don't have to cheese us with choices. Either be direct and tell the story you want to tell and fuck off with the choices, or actually put in the legwork to make branching storylines. That could really blow people away. One thing I've noticed about Western gaming is that truly branching, nebulous stories are very rare. Not unheard of, but you almost have to go out of your way to find that kind of thing. I mean, look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It shocked people by having nine different endings, and they really only differ based on who you end up killing throughout the rest of the game. Most of the dynamic visual novels I've played have a shared first act, and then multiple fully fleshed, unique storylines based on which path you take, effectively making them several times longer than they first appear. Hell, Shining Song Star Nova, which I fucking adore by the way, explicitly has you choose between seven different complete storylines, each with a good and bad ending. There is no reason this kind of thing couldn't catch on in the West, but we'd need to ease into it. People aren't immediately going to be willing to sink dozens of hours into an entirely new medium. Plus, we'd need Western devs to get some experience, since right now, most visual novels are either Japanese or styled after Japanese media. There just aren't really many non-Japanese, non-weeb visual novel devs out there, and anime does turn some people away. But that's where things like Telltale's style of game come in. They have that narrative focus where gameplay is secondary, which flies in the face of the common Western gaming attitude of gameplay overall. Telltale games share so much in common with visual novels on a conceptual level, and there's honestly so much good within Telltale that just doesn't quite hit home with me. As the saying goes, a few bad apples ruin the bunch. As a bunch of apples, Telltale is good. Very good, in fact. But the illusion of choice is the bad apple that ruins the overall experience for me, and I know I'm not the only one annoyed by this. The first time I played a Telltale game, I fucking loved it because I didn't realize that my choices weren't real. It was only when I did some research, fully intending to replay it, that I learned the truth, and that just put me off Telltale entirely. Every time I would see a fake choice, it was a stark reminder of the cheap trick that was being pulled. It would completely break my immersion, and ironically killed the emotional investment that the actual story had built up. It's not that Telltale games are bad. Honestly, if they were just shit, I'd probably never give them a second thought. But I see how much good there is. I see how it parallels visual novels, a medium that I am incredibly passionate about. I see how much potential and how much talent that studio has at its command. And I see how they fucked it up and how they continue to fuck it up. They feel the need to treat me and other gamers as children who need our egos stoked and to be told we matter while they effectively hand us the unplugged controller to play on. And that stings. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I upload every Monday, so make sure to check back in next week. Follow me on Twitter at AdsTweets for updates and memes, and follow me on Twitch at AdsGames if you want to see me edit these videos. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next Monday. Can't